Now, over the last what year or so, we've spoken to one County Durham woman who was campaigning to change the rules around care home visits during the pandemic and the numerous lockdowns, of course. Margaret Davison from Newton Aycliffe was restricted from visiting her sister and only saw her for about 20 minutes once a week. Well, sadly, her sister has now passed away and despite restrictions lifting, she says actually some care homes are still limiting visits and Margaret's on the line this morning. Hiya, Margaret. Good morning, Neil. Hiya. Lovely to catch up with you. Just remind us of the situation when we spoke to you to you last year. What was going on? Um, well, what was happening last year, um, obviously there was the lockdown in care homes from um, a, a middle of March um, and normally I would have visited my sister on on a daily basis, um, helping to support her. Um, and that, that just stopped. Um, so throughout the summer, throughout the summer when um, restrictions lifted a little bit, we were allowed window visits or else um, a gazebo in the garden of the care home, um, yeah. which weren't very satisfactory. My sister had no meaningful speech. She was bewildered. She didn't know what was going on. Um, you can't explain to someone with dementia um, that, you know, the, the pandemic situation. Mm. Um, so effectively, I, I was barred from our life. Um, there was lots of things happened. Um, she, she had a fall. She had an undiagnosed fracture. Um, and then in October time last year, she gave up eating and drinking. Um, I think the um, I, I should have been given exceptional circumstances, I think, to visit, right. uh, given the state of my sister. Um, but I think the loneliness and isolation hastened her already declining well-being. And basically, she gave up. Well, our condolences. Sadly, you, you did lose your sister. How, yes. You talked about being barred from seeing her. How much were you able to see her? Whether whether there were pockets with her? The, there were little, yeah, little pockets when when restrictions were lifted, or if you know, if there were no cases at the care home, no cases of COVID. And um, they did quite well, really, in my sister's home. Um, I, I think that there were very few cases. Um, but of course, if anybody tests positive, then they, you know that they, they they just lock you out completely. Um, has the has it changed much then? Because you're part, for people who don't know, you're part of Right for Residents. That's right. Explain what I that am, is. Yes. Explain what I've, that is. I've continued to support the Rights for Residents campaign. Right. Um, there are a group of families that, that the campaign was formed in about September time last year. Um, and they've, they've actually done wonders, I think, without the Rights for Residents campaign. Um, the restrictions wouldn't have been changed even in the way that they have um, because co government had just sort of pushed care to the, to the back burner. Um, and when everybody else was given a Freedom Day in July this year, um, the Prime Minister barely mentioned care homes. Um, what's happened, they, they, they've sort of lifted the restrictions a little bit. They've, get, um, they've allowed a few extra visitors and they've brought in an essential caregiver status, which basically means that every resident in care is entitled to have one essential caregiver who can be tested the same as staff um, and is supposed to have the freedom to come and go the same as staff. Right. You say supposed to. Clearly, what, that's yeah, not happening it, in, in it all cases? it doesn't happen. Right. Many homes refuse to follow the guidance. It's advisory, it's not law. And instead, they impose their own restrictions, their own visiting regime. Um, it's, it's at the whim of individual care providers and managers, basically. Do you, would, you, would you describe it as excuses or no? from care homes in terms of why, why they are restricting visits? I think sometimes it is excuses, yes. Uh -huh. I, I do think it's that. So what needs to change, Margaret? Uh, sorry? What needs to change? What needs to change is that the, the guidance needs to become law. Um, and uh, rights for residents have been pushing this uh, r right throughout the campaign and certainly from uh, last May onwards, um, Harriet Harman chaired a joint human rights committee and that was presented to government, which brought about the few changes that have happened. Mm. Um, but, but the, you know, the, it's, it's guidance, it's not yeah. law. Um, and so care homes can continue to do their own thing. Um, and what concerns us in, as winter approaches, and we 
we get rising cases or new variants, um, the government might the government might just close care homes down again. They might right. even stop the essential caregiver status. Um, there's, there's a protest in London on um, the 16th of September. Rights for residents have avoided doing this in the past, but we feel this is the only way forward. Right. Um, and there's a, a petition with over uh, almost 300,000 signatures um, which is going to be presented to Downing Street on yeah. the 16th of September. Thank you for that Margaret. While we've got you on, uh, the Prime Minister has expected to unveil the plans to reform the system of social care and um, that announcement sometime we think probably tomorrow, sometime this week certainly. Yeah. What would you like to say briefly? Well I, I, I think it's sort of a, a, what's hitting the headlines is the moment is the, is the cost of care. Yes which obviously needs to be addressed. Um, but, you know, the, the grumbling about taxes and national insurance having to go up to, to fund the cost of care. Um, while it's an important issue, um, I, think it's, I think it's going to distract from this situation that we've got around the restricted visiting at the moment. Um, but as far as care is concerned, I mean, the care system is broken. I've dealt with the care system for 10 years, it was, it was by the time my sister died, she, she had a stroke in 2010. Um, so I dealt with this for 10 and a half years. So I've, I've seen what goes on in the care system. And although the cost of care needs to be addressed, what also needs to be addressed is the quality of care. Um, they, they, they run on um, sort of minimum numbers of care staff. Care staff work long hours, they're poorly paid. And while all of those issues are important, um, I, I, I'm a bit upset that this has come about right at this point in time because I think what is very important is that we get this issue of the restricted visiting dealt with. Thank you, Margaret. Margaret Davison there from Newton Aircliff. Uh, talking to us about uh, her involvement with um, this campaign, which is right for residents, not just in County Durham, but around the UK as well.